Valar Morgulis. Valar Duhai. Welcome to Southside Westeros, where we explore the world of Game of Thrones. From the fist of the first man to the catacombs of the Red Keep, no secrets will be safe from us. Enter and forever be changed. There is only one God, and his name is Death. And there is only one thing we say to Death. Not today. Valar Magulis. Welcome to Southside Westeros. I'm your host, D. Paul, your master of whispers, and this is episode one, Daenerys Targaryen, Good versus Evil. We are going to be discussing which side of the coin this Targaryen landed on. We're going to go into her entire run on the Game of Thrones series, and we're going to break it down season by season, and we're going to answer this question. Was Danny a good queen who was betrayed by those around her, or was she always destined to fail? Now, I know this is a touchy subject among many of you. In, on Reddit, in many of the message boards, in my inbox, everyone has an opinion on Danny, and they're very strong about the position that they've taken on her. Several people look at Danny as a monarch who could have changed the entire world of Westeros. Some say for the better. Some say that if it wasn't for the betrayal of Jon Snow and the ineptitude of those around her, primarily Tyrion, that these are the things that led her to fail. I disagree. I intend to show you that Danny had many missteps along the way. And in all honesty, she was never meant to rule. I believe that in the upcoming House of the Dragon, you will see what Danny may or may not have been meant to be. But for all intents and purposes, those are one of my favorite sets of words, but <laughs> I'll try not to use it a lot, folks. But, you know, you gotta, you, if you know me, you know. I intend to show Danny as a character, while I love her, I do love her as a base character. I think she had a tremendous upside, but she was ill-prepared to be a monarch and to be a leader. I liken her to a child with an Uzi. A child is a child, but you put an Uzi in their hand, they can cause a lot of damage, wreak a lot of havoc on this world. And that's what Danny did. But I get it. But I, before you tear my head off, let's go into it. And I'll start breaking down what I see as mishaps on the way to what ultimately led to Drogon carrying her lifeless body off into the sunset. But I intend to show you that while Danny was a relatable character who garnered sympathy from the viewer, she was the worst thing that could have happened to Westeros. I know, I know, I know, I know. That's a uh, big bold statements, right? Well, we'll see. But let's get let's go to the beginning. So let's talk about Daenerys Stormborn of House Targaryen, the first of her name, Queen of the Andals and the First Men, Protector of the Seven Kingdoms, the Mother of Dragons, the Khaleesi of the Great Green Sea, the Unburnt, and the Breaker of Chains. Whew. Yeah. A big title. This is going to be a quick recap of who she was. Danny, or Daenerys, was the youngest child of King Aerys, the Mad King, and his sister wife, Relia. Her father died during the sack of King's Landing uh, from a sword to the back from Jamie Lannister. We'll discuss that in a future podcast. And she was born after the sack. Her mother had escaped and died during childbirth. Robert Baratheon then installed himself as the king. Her brother Viserys fled to the island of Dragonstone, their ancestral home, to escape Robert because Robert wanted no piece of that. He wanted him gone. He felt a certain way about Rhaegar. Uh, Robert killed him, although, although there was never any real evidence that Robert actually killed Rhaegar. So we're going to get into that. Um, Rhaegar's wife, however, Elia Martell and their children were raped and killed by the mountain at the direction, supposedly, of Tywin Lannister. But unbeknownst to Daenerys, the rest of her family, her oldest brother and everyone 
who had died. And she now is alone in the world with Viserys. Viserys is then known as the Beggar King. They go from house to house to house. She never really has a place to call home. So even though she's told she's royalty, even though she's told that she comes from this great lineage and long line of Targaryens who ruled for years, these are just stories to her. And the only, uh, the only thing that really justifies this or even confirms this is those who do still support the legitimacy of a Targaryen on the throne. But for the most part, she's just a young child that grew up in a very unstable environment, um, has gone from place to place to place, and all these people are not helping you to be kind or nice. They're helping you because one day they may need a favor from the king. However, I think the reason why her life was so unstable is because the instability of Viserys. Anyone who knows anything would look at Viserys and see he would be a terrible king. Why is that? Is it because he's a bad guy? Probably, because it is referenced that he does beat Danny, um, and that's called releasing the dragon. But the the age of Viserys when he went on the road uh, is is uh, anywhere from eight to fourteen. Um, not really sure. So this young child really had no training into how to be a monarch, how to be a king. He was a spoiled rich kid that then was forced to take care of a baby. Now, they did have servants. Now, don't get me wrong. These are not just two children on the road not being able to take care of themselves. They had servants initially, servants who were loyal to them and who were loyal to their family. However, that loyalty ran out when the money ran out. They were even forced to sell the most precious heirloom they had, which was the crown of their dearly departed mother, who died in childbirth. Now, let me, let, me, let me explain something to you. Viserys, while probably loving Danny because of the blood relationship they had, most likely resented her. He, as a child or preteen, saw the deaths of his entire family and saw everything that he had ever known in his entire life snatched from him. And then this little white-haired little girl then kills my mother during childbirth, which makes me now having to be the one that takes care of them. They were giving sanctuary um, and uh, in the free city of Pentos. Now, Danny dreamed of a peaceful home and a place to belong to at this point. But she lives in constant fear of Viserys. Again, he hits her every time he loses his temper. Living under Viserys' domination left her meek, and mellable. So I want you to, to think about that. This is a meek and mellable person who was then thrust into the Game of Thrones. She doesn't even know what she wants at this point. In the books, Danny's 14. In the show, they never exactly address her age, but one can assume it's around anywhere from 16 to 18. But this is, we, we have to know the measure of who Daenerys Targaryen is at this point when she starts playing with Uzis. She doesn't get to the Uzis yet, but everything is leading up to that. So, when we meet Danny, she's standing in a great hall with a ve and, and Amelia Clark. She was masterful in displaying this particular emotion. She was lost. I don't know what I'm here to do, but I understand that I have a duty because it's been beaten into me. So she's standing there in a barred house, in a borrowed dress, with no possessions in the world. No possessions. And you look at her, and then Viserys comes in, compliments her on her body, and in that same conversation, threatens her. Now, when you look at Danny and you look at the reference of the book, the book says Danny's thinking this. I don't want to do this. You want to marry me off to someone twice my age who is a savage, not... not Figuratively, literally, this is a savage man who kills and murders. I reference uh, the wedding, where a, a Dothraki wedding without at least three deaths is considered a dull affair. And this is who you're sending, this child. This child who's had a very chaotic life. When she looks up at Viserys, I see what she would have assumed to be was love. 
love for this man because as a Targaryen, her assumption would have been, this is my future husband. This is who I will bear kids for. This is the life that I was born into. And then once he threatens to wake the dragon, all of that love leaves her eyes and there's only fear. But what I will reference is Danny never knew love. Never, ever, ever experienced love. All she had experienced in her 14 to 17 years was manipulation, abuse, inconsistency, and a vagabond existence. She was a homeless person. And even though I was homeless, I found whatever joy I could in the experiences I've had. And I want to go back, as they reference in the book, to that place with the red door. Because that was the only sliver of happiness Daenerys felt at that point. So the magister has set this up. Now, he's a slimy, marmy man who, who makes her very uncomfortable. And in the words of Cersei Lannister, little girls are hurt all over the world. Even though she's young and inexperienced, she understands that this man wants something from her as well. But he brokered the deal for her to marry Khal Drogo, played by Jason Momoa, of the Dothraki. Now, she did not want to marry him, and she tells her brother as much, and she wants to go home. And Viserys, quite matter-of-factly, looks at her and says, we don't have a home. But what he has is 40,000 men in his Kalasar, and those men will get them the Iron Throne back. He wants to use them to invade Westeros, and he tells Danny that she has no choice. And quite honestly, <laughs> doesn't really matter what happens to her. She's nothing. She is a vessel for his power, as he told her when he left that room. Today begins my reign, sweet sister. So Danny then stands out front like a piece of meat. And she has to be approved of by Drogo, um, even though Jason Momoa might be easy on the eyes to most women. To her as a child, this is a gruff, scary man. So that's where she began. That's where she began abused by her brother on the run, homeless, and then forced into a marriage for other men's benefits. And let's be honest with you, in a feudal system, in the society, in the medieval society, women were property, and they were used to broker deals, or they were used for their bodies, they were used for their servitude, but their thoughts and their feelings, oh my God, what are those? Now, at the wedding, this is when Danny receives the three dragon eggs. In the words of the magistrate, they had turned to stone years ago, so these were strictly sentimental. Now, Sir Jorah Mormont, who was a very underrated character and who we will see later on falls in love with Danny very quickly and suffers, suffers the entire series because all he does is bend over backwards to try to show her, try to get a glimpse of love from her. And we'll get into that. We're not going to get into that now, but we're going to get into that. But Jorah is there from the beginning, and I want you to see this. I want you to see how Danny pushes away any person who is consistent and really just has her best interest for her carnal pleasures. And this comes from her unstable upbringing. So she gets these dragon eggs and she, in a sense, marries Drogo. He gives her a horse. She wants to say thank you. Jorah lets her know there's no thank you in Dothraki, Khaleesi. And at that point, she looks and, oh, my God. And then, of course, we see the scene where Drogo takes her virginity forcefully. Although I, I kind of think she wasn't a virgin. I think Viserys had long violated her. It's just the way, how possessive he was about her. I, I think the possession went past him being impatient and wanting, wanting what he wanted right then and there, wanting his army, wanting to take Westeros over. I think his anger came from Carl Drogo, Carl Drogo playing with his sister, who he had played with first. That's my toy. And even though I had to give it to you to get what I want, I still don't want you touching it because you smell like horse manure. <laughs> yeah, you see, it, it, and, and as you start thinking, we don't think of that. We didn't, we didn't assume that, because the Game of Thrones writers at that point, did, I don't think they wanted you to focus on that. 
So they, they kind of push it away because they wanted to kind of raise Carl Drogo to prominence so you can see what a vicious warrior he is and, and start telling the story. But I feel that his anger was because you're sleeping with my woman. That That's my sister, my wife, and you're not going to have her. <laughs> but you got to have her because I need you because I don't even know how to use my sword. <laughs> I apologize for anyone that may have offended. It's just jokes. So, you know, these are these are the things we're seeing here, which which causes Danny to be conflicted. She can never truly give herself to Khal Drogo because she's already given herself to her brother. And I referenced that first scene where she's looking at him and she's looking with him with everything she has and her assumption of what love is. But this love comes with abuse. So maybe this is what I'm to expect. But I know I don't like it. Now she's traveling. She's struggling to fulfill Drogo's sexual appetites. Because her feelings don't matter. So her pleasure. her As, he, as Viserys told his slave. I didn't purchase you so that my sister can pleasure a savage. He didn't really want her to find any joy in this whatsoever because I feel that he didn't want her to love this man because she was supposed to love him. This is why this went the way it did. As she travels and as she's having difficulty with the sex and the, 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 the aggression and the horse meat and the, the just the nomadic lifestyle. This is not what I'm used to. I'm not used to being dirty. I'm not used to long, long traveling and sleeping on the floor and slaves. And I'm not used to any of this. And she hears the ghost grass theory of how the grass will take over the world and that the marriage will get easier. And somehow this loveless sex that you're forced to do every night by this sweaty, stinky man. She, she, she has no, no hope for the future. This is it. This is all it is. But then, during one particularly rough session, she looks over and sees the dragon eggs. And then, you see, it starts turning. There's got to be something else here. What are these things that are so interesting to me? And that's when she starts asking her handmaidens. They give her the story of dragons. And she's heard about dragons from her brother, but her brother is conveying stories and I'm sure they were wrong because he was a child when he heard them. But Dorea, the one I referenced earlier, the handmaiden or slave that Viserys would also violate, mind you, told her of old stories of the dragons coming from the moon and going out into the world and then it goes into D the Dothraki and their mythology and up to this up to this point i don't think danny really bought in to this marriage she didn't know how to she didn't she wasn't aware that she had to she's a child so she didn't know what to do she's untrained but dorea was in a pleasure house on, so from the age of 9 so she knew how to slang that thing <laughs> and that's what she did and that's what she was good at and she taught not only the Khaleesi, how to pleasure a man. She taught her how to communicate with her husband. Now, I want you folks to think about this. She didn't know how to communicate with her husband. I can't even have a conversation with you, let alone love you. So this is a, a very interesting tipping point because she learned politics almost from a slave. She learned how to maneuver men of power from a slave. This is her training, people. Think about it. you got to understand this. This is her training. She learned from a low-born slave who was given to a whorehouse at the age of nine how to be a queen. Now, I'm going to let that soak in for a second how with that type of training could you be ready to sit on the iron throne so right there right there she started off wrong whether it was abuse from her brother and no training there whether it was trying to avoid old men taking advantage of your young body or whether it was here in the 
throes of the Dothraki, in the, in the middle of this horde, the only person that can teach you how to move and shake as a queen was a slave. <laughs> it, it, it all starts making sense now. It's starting to, you're starting to get a picture of it now. You're like, okay, okay, this is, this is like you know someone who was digging ditches, then running for the president. With that knowledge that they had from digging ditches, it just wouldn't work. It just would not work. So Daenerys now commands the Kalisar. At that point, still overwhelmed by everything that's around her, by the new world she has to get used to, she stops them and kind of walks off into a large tuft of grass to kind of get herself together. Her brother comes in and wants to do what he normally does, which is renew his control over her. He feels the control is leaving. But again, I want you to look at how angry he was. Was he angry that she she told him to stop? Was she angry that, you know, he didn't want to be there if it was taking too long? No, he was mad because his woman was with someone else who was stronger than him. <laughs> and she saw that when Ricaro was going to send him to meet his father. And she begged him not to. Please spare him. And they did because she's the Khaleesi. But knowing what they know and living the type of savage life they did, you got to be taught a lesson. So walk in the back with the women because we don't respect you as a man. It's not about him hitting her. Now, she's the Khaleesi and he has to defend her. So, of course, that couldn't have happened. But it was the fact that I put a whip around your neck and you started crying like a baby. That's why you had to ride with the women, because you're not a man. And if you're not a man, how are you a king? Right there. They already were very suspect of him because they, they can look at him and say, look at this guy. He's, he's not he's nothing like us. He will never have a braid. But at that point, he wouldn't even fight for himself. So this man can never be a king. And because you can never be a king, you deserve no respect from us. So you stand in the back. Now, Daenerys joins Jorah and Jorah to her, I think, is a is a level of peace. But she has in no way, shape or form any type of attraction. And I don't think it's against Jorah. I just think she's a child. I, I All I know from men is what they want out of my body. All I know of men is that they're here to use me. I don't see them as anything to love because every time I love someone, they wake the dragon. So while she uses Jorah, quite frankly, throughout the entire show, she could never fathom being with him. And we're going to get into that why, because of who her body count is. <laughs> the body count, right? Because her body count is what, three or four. I don't know. We'll get into it. Um, maybe five, possibly 18. But we'll, 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 we'll break that down and we'll go into her lover's and, and all those things. But Jorah tries to walk her through these things. So I think while everyone around her, that was the only influence who was giving her advice that would have helped her be a queen, that would have saved her from a lot of that anger that finally bubbled up at the end of the series. She refused to listen to Jorah. I want you to think about it. She refused to listen to Jorah Mormont. He was from Westeros. He understood it. He was an adult in Westeros, but she did not listen to him. Everyone she listened to was never a part of Westeros. So these are, here's, I'm telling you, look at what I'm, I'm showing you, that it wasn't the fact that she was ill-prepared. Her decision-making was suspect. So she may have never, ever been able to be a queen because she couldn't make good decisions. It's, it's, it's all there in the show and on the paper. But again, it was because she's a child, because she she didn't have an adult brain and adult sensibilities and adult emotions to handle the complex things that were happening around her so fast. She didn't have it. And, and those around her recognized it, but when she had the Uzi, there was nothing else they can do but go along for the ride. Now, these eggs are a focal point. She keeps looking at these eggs. She keeps looking at them because something inside her as a Targaryen is connected to those eggs and she understands that there's power 
There's power there. I just don't know how to unlock it. I have a gun and I can shoot it, but I got to find the safety. Where can I take the safety off so I can actually use and wield this power and protect myself initially? But how can I take the power and make those who hurt me suffer the way I have suffered? So she puts them in the fire. She touches them and she pulls the... She pulls the eggs out of the fire. Her handmaiden runs in. Khaleesi, no, grabs the egg, burns her hand, and then, as a handmaiden should in those times, disregarded her own pain and checked on her master or mistress. And wasn't she surprised to find that there were no burn marks on Daenerys' hands? Hmm. Now, let's fast forward. Daenerys, now equipped with the lessons of the pleasuring house, then goes to her communal home, temporary, but communal tent with Khal Drogo. He comes in, S-stained, as Viserys would say, and smelly, and attempts to mount her in the way he has been. But she stops him. And he gets aggressive with her, but she stops him again. And in his language, says, I will look upon your face tonight. And Jason Momoa, I have to give you credit. Not only was he amazing in conveying emotion in a made-up language, but he was amazing in conveying his emotion while saying nothing. He, the way he looked at her, he wasn't used to this. I'm not used to this tenderness. But you know what else was funny? Daenerys was not used to that tenderness. They both had something ignite inside of them in that moment. And I know that's what they wanted us to see because her handmaiden told her, Dorea said, love is in the eyes, Khaleesi. Love is in the eyes. So they wanted you to believe that they fell in love at that moment. And they did. But there was something else that you missed. They both felt love for the first time in their lives. Both of them. There's no way a cow could ever feel love. His whole life is aggression, fighting. He never could feel love because that would have been weakness. But And she never felt love. And at that moment... When she was on top of him and he got up and they looked at each other, that was the moment. And that's what led to this love affair. But it was infatuation. It wasn't love because neither of them could understand it because they had no frame of reference. So this was an infatuation that caused everything that comes next, an infatuation, a feeling that I want to keep having. I don't understand that this has to kind of even out and I have to make good decisions for those I love. And this is where her bad decision making down the road comes back into play again. Because without understanding what you had to do for the person you quote unquote love, then how will you make positive decisions to benefit your future family? So we have two people who never felt anything now feeling infatuation. And they assume it's love. So now every decision from this point on is to satisfy the infatuation. An infatuation feeling will have you in the rain getting a cold, singing outside someone's window who's got another person up there. Infatuation will have you slashing tires and, and breaking somebody's windshield. Infatuation will have you socially shaming somebody across social media. This is what infatuation does. Love makes you second guess and do the best for your significant other. So this is infatuation that we have that leads to all the other events. Now, we have a young girl, Danny, who's never felt in charge of anything. She's never felt power. She only felt it slightly when she was protected by her Kalisar against her brother. But she's now starting to get this feeling. I'm starting to, all right, all right, I got a little, I got a little backup now. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to get it in now. Come on, let's go. So now she's in the Doth Kaleen. And she eats the horse skin, and she keeps it down. And again, again, Viserys is staring, and he hates it. He hates this. Who is she to be loved? They're supposed to be cheering me. I am supposed to be the one in charge. I am their king. I should be having this. I, 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 I. But he hasn't earned it. So as he watches his sister earn the love of these savages, and I want to tell you, remember that moment, because that same moment happens after the Night King battle when 
Danny is looking at Jon Snow. <laughs> Targaryen behavior is Targaryen behavior, people. Believe me when I say this. Believe me when I say this. So I'm showing you. So now, Rago, the stallion that mounts the earth. She professes who her son's name will be, and he will mount the earth. He'll be the cow of cows, and he'll be the greatest to ever seen. We've heard this story millions of times from anybody who's had a kid, and then he grows up, he has glasses and acne. But, you know, besides the point. So, again, Viserys, infuriated at this point. He sees it. I will never have men follow me like they are following her. I will never gain the following they have. So the only way I can get this crown is to buy my army. And this is when you see him and Jura in the tent where Jura stops him from stealing the dragon eggs. And again, Viserys shows why he's not a king. Any king would have cut Jura down or quite honestly, let, you know what? And let's break that down real quick. Viserys, as a king, Jura stopping you. What do you do, Viserys? If you're a king, you go out. How much can I pay you to kill this guy? Kill him. Boop, boop. Take my eggs and go. <laughs> Simple. But those two are so ill-equipped for leadership, so lacking of the training to understand what it takes to be a king and maintain a kingdom that they just make small mistakes over and over and over and over again. And these snowball into larger mistakes and it's exacerbated to the point where it just consumes the young dragons, right? So this causes Viserys, since he couldn't steal the eggs, he comes in and tries his last ditch effort. What has worked for me my entire life? Abusing this girl to get what I want. And he tries and he makes the biggest and last mistake of his life by threatening the wife of a cow in front of his army. <laughs> and his lack of understanding of what a king is supposed to do is what got him killed. He got the crown, but not the one he was asking for. And at that point, at that point is when Danny started to fall. Look away, child. Jorah told her, look away, child. You, did he tell her that because he thought she couldn't handle it? Of course not. Danny watched three murders or more at her wedding. So was it, what was Jorah telling her at this point? Don't become what you're about to become. Look away. Keep what is pure, what is tender about you. Keep that sacred. Don't fall into this. You cannot handle it. Now, Jorah Mormont is from Bear Island. Look who his father was. Look who his niece was. He understands war. He understands tactics. He understands men. And he understands what's about to happen to her. He understood that once her heart grew that ice around it, she was destined to fail. See, these are the things that we don't notice or we don't look at to understand what has created the circumstance that really caused Danny not to be able to take the position she assumed was her right as the queen of the seven kingdoms. Now, let's go into the next step. So Viserys is dead, and now she has, for the most part, given all the way in to being a Khaleesi. Being a Khaleesi. She hasn't, she's now starting to see that as Viserys was burnt, and she could not be, that maybe I'm, sp I'm supposed to be the queen. There was nothing that told her she should have been. This was just her assumption. Now, she, And she's basing that on what? The lessons of Viserys. The brother you just watched get killed because clearly you said it. He's not a dragon and he can never be a king. So you have really no basis for your assumption that you should be queen other than I just want it. Those are the thoughts of a spoiled child, not a person who will run a kingdom because you don't know how. You can barely be a Khaleesi, which leads us into the next thing. One of her biggest mistakes. You don't know who you're with. You don't understand who your husband is, who your people are, and what drives them, right? So now, the lands of Lazar, a.k.a. the Lamb Men, they loot it, they take slaves, and they start to do what they do, which is treat their prisoners like trash. Well, why are they doing this? They have to sell them. Why? Now, rewind it a little bit. Drogo never really cared about 
what Viserys wanted. They want to do what they do. Stay where they are. They're not going to go across the sea. Now, it wasn't until the wine merchant tried to <sighs> poison her and Jorah stopped it. And this is where Drogo's infatuation basically set up his demise. Because of his infatuation, not love for his silver-haired uh, witch, that caused him to go against everything that had made him successful. So what do they start doing? Now we're not just looting and raping you. Because looting, raping you, and moving on, it, they'd have been done before Daenerys got there. And they referenced this in the show. He's now looting, raping, and selling slaves. And she says to Jorah, well, I thought that they don't take slaves. Well, Jorah says, Khaleesi, they need slaves to buy ships so they can fight your war. Now, a seasoned, grizzled politician or a person that has been trained from a young age for power would understand, I got to crack an egg to make an omelet. She did not understand that because she was inexperienced. She wanted an omelet with bacon, sausage, and spinach in it, but she didn't want to crack an egg. And because she didn't want to crack the egg, she stopped her army from doing what made them the type of men to help her win her crown. Again, inexperience caused her to make fatal mistakes. Fatal mistakes that led to her demise. Khal Drogo survives. She wins the crown. I truly, truly believe that. She wins the crown. She listens to Jura. She wins the crown. But she didn't listen. She didn't understand it. Dothraki have to eat. This is what feeds their aggression. And this is what will make them great fighters. So she stops them from taking slaves. She stops them from taking women. And then, because her husband is infatuated with what's between her thighs, he goes against his very own Kalisar, the men who have followed him into battle over and over again and gladly give their lives up for him, are now forced to bow and scrape to a woman. Whether she's the Khaleesi or not, a woman. You are no longer fit to lead. He gets up and fights. And because of his infatuation, he wants to show how good he is. He could have ended that fight in six seconds. But he gets scratched from pushing himself into a Dothraki sword, which causes an infection. He falls off his sword. He can't off his horse. He can't ride anymore. He is no longer the cow. Now you have an inexperienced child who needs to be spanked making decisions. She allows a witch to put a spell on him. She again refuses to listen to those around her. She just met this witch. I don't know anything about her, but I'm going to refuse to listen to the people that have been protecting my life to listen to this chick. Here we go. Daenerys, Targar Daenerys Targaryen. Khaleesi making bad decisions. Now, because of this decision, she not only loses Khal Drogo, <laughs> she loses her son. And through that, she loses her people. And so now Khal Drogo is a shell of his former self. He's a vegetable, basically. The worst thing that can ever happen to him, every decision she made was against everything he believed in because she wanted what she wanted right then and there. This is the measure of Daenerys Targaryen. This is the measure. So while I understand they wanted you to feel some type of sympathy for her, and in a way I do, but I also cannot... Give her a pass on the things she did because all of these were direct mistakes she made which led to her losing the one true love as well as having her first and only child stillborn with a monstrous appearance. So what does she do at that point? Well, this is the one redeeming fact. <laughs> she takes the dragon's eggs, puts them in the funeral pyre, along with Drogo's body, after she kills him, mind you. She killed the love of her life. Let's not forget that. She killed him. Was it a mercy? Who knows? She should have let him die before. If he's just dying now, let him die the way he would have loved and move on. But no, because you were selfish, because you didn't want... <laughs> you didn't want that to be the end of your story because that would have been the end of your story. He's dead. You go off with the other old cow's wives, and that's the end of you. She goes into that funeral pyre. Now, the one thing she did that I love is she took that witch in there and burnt her too. And now most of her Kalisar has left at this point. 
So she's got a few left who are, and I don't think they're loyal to her. I, I, I refuse to believe they were loyal to her. They were that loyal to Cal Drogo, and they were there for their cow. But then, in the morning, when the fire is smoldering, going out, and she appeared with those three dragons, they fall to their knees, and they see their new queen, their new leader. And it, that's not because of her ability as a stateswoman. No, that's because you got three dragons. I got to see what this is hitting for. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. So I hope that you can kind of see where I'm coming from here. I'm not disparaging this young lady, but I'm showing you where she has made mistakes. Now, this is just season one. This has been our season one recap of Danny. We will get into season two and go into this in further detail. Thanks for joining. Thank you for listening to Southside Westeros. We look forward to you coming back and visiting us again. If you want to email us, you can reach us at southsidewesteros at gmail.com. You can also reach us at Southside Westeros at both Instagram, Facebook, and Twitch. We're SS Westeros at Cup of Coffee and Twitter. If you want to donate to the program to keep getting this great content, please donate to our Patreon or our cash app, both are Southside Westeros. Valor Dojares. And may the mother bring seven blessings to you all.